Hey painting friends! Welcome back. My name is Stoof. This week I'm going to talk about my painting process to create this original oil painting inspired by Mount Rainier in Washington State. In this video I'm going to walk through my painting process so that you can see how I went about creating this painting and hopefully this can give you some tips that can help you with painting mountains and also with achieving accurate lighting and proportions in a landscape like this. While you're here, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more of my fun painting tutorials like this one. So first I start out by thinning down my oil paint with some citrus solvents. I'm just using a number two flat tip brush to sketch out the concept. I'm using just like a cool blue color to sketch it out because there's a lot of cooler tones in this painting and those will just get covered up nicely. For the mountain, I'm starting with the very basic shape, just that like cone shape at the top. And then for the trees, just looking at the top of that tree line where it meets the sky and trying to just very roughly sketch that out. Same thing with the reflection, getting that in there. And it looks like I didn't add the mountain in the sketch at the beginning here, but we come back to that later. The next step is to start filling in a base layer of the oil paint. So I started out with some phthalo blue with some phthalo green, a little bit of titanium white mixed in there. And we have a light source on the right side of the painting. It's like off of the canvas, out of the view, but you know that the light source is coming from that right side. So your sky is a little bit lighter, a little bit more phthalo green and a little bit more white on the right side, a little bit more phthalo blue on the left side. And then your reflection for the sky is going to have a lot more phthalo blue. Basically everything in the reflection is just slightly cooler and a deeper blue color, a little bit more saturated blue color. So after blocking in the base colors for the sky and the reflection of the sky, start blocking in some of the shadows for the snow and the mountains, then start blocking in some of the shadows for the rocky part of the mountain, starting to get some of the foreground shadowy colors in there as well. Everything in the foreground is in shadow, so we wanna keep those cooler uh, browns, greens, grays, purples, those kinds of colors blues. Uh, and once that is all filled in, we got our base layer of paint filled in. I let this layer of paint dry for about a week and then I come back. Since I'm using oil paint, it takes about a week for it to dry. If you're working with acrylic paints, you probably just need to wait a half hour to an hour for your paint to dry before you can apply your next layer. One final touch before letting this layer dry is to make those vertical up and down little squiggle marks uh, at the top of the tree line for the reflection and the real tree line there, as you can see I just did. And that just kind of fuzzes up the top of that tree line and makes it look like we have a bunch of tiny little trees up there. And then once the full canvas is covered with this base layer of paint, we let it dry and then we start to work on our next session. This is what I'm doing here, starting to build up some of the depth in the cloud, mixing a little bit of brown with cooler reds and uh, some ochre, some Naples yellow in those clouds there, and then starting to soften up the clouds on the left side a little more too, just by taking the brush and uh, very gently going back and forth to kind of get like a hazy fuzzy look on the clouds. And then I start working on the shadows in the mountain. I'm building up these shadows here for the shadows on the left side of the mountain where like that whole side of the mountain is in shadow. We're mixing ultramarine blue with some umber, a little bit of whites mixed in there, maybe a little bit of black, maybe a hint of dioxazane purple as well. And then for the rocks that are lit up by the sun, those are warm colored compared to the ones in the shadow. These ones are warmer. So we have some burnt sienna in there, maybe like a hint of cadmium red, uh, definitely have like magenta and our umbers in there still as well. I'm continuing to 
boost the detail in the mountain here with my liner brush. This tiny little brush helps me get all these tiny little details in on the mountain. And I'm thinning my paint down slightly with citrus solvents to give me a little bit more uh, maneuverability with the brush and the paint. You wanna start with more of the shadows and then build your highlights up on top there. Uh, once I get the real mountain at the top, with some detail, then I start going into the reflection of that mountain. Your reflection is just a mirror image. And once I felt comfortable with that next round of detail on the mountain, I started to go in with my liner brush and start to add detail to the tree line. So we did that fuzzy tree line before. Once that dried, I went back in with my liner brush here and start to add those tiny little tick marks for each individual little tree. This goes relatively quickly. It might seem kind of tedious to do this with a liner brush, but it's just a bunch of little tick marks and they don't have to be perfect. So it doesn't take too much time to do this. As I'm working on this tree line here, you should be able to notice that the trees are getting darker as they're coming closer to us in the foreground. The trees closest to us uh, on that right side are bigger, so they're taller than the other trees and they have more contrast, more blue and green in them. The trees farther in the background have some crimson and purple mixed in with the green to kind of mute that color down. You don't want the colors to be quite as vibrant in the distance. And I'm also, as I'm building up those trees, I'm taking a number four flat tip brush with a little bit of ultramarine blue, white, and black in there and just kind of fuzzing around, uh, making little circular motions and that's building up the appearance of fog in the forest there. We don't have quite as much detail in the reflection of the forest. You can just see a couple of those little tops of the trees kind of coming down there. Uh, so make sure wherever you have a tree in the real life forest that you have that same tree in the reflection for the big tall ones closest to the shoreline. When you are trying to paint in the rest of that forest, you can just put some squiggles, uh, some up and down tick marks, and that should be fine. The next step is to keep moving closer to the foreground. Here I'm starting to add in those two pine trees in the lower left section of the painting, starting with the deepest shadow. And you kind of just do a straight pencil line down the middle for the trunk. And then you start to go around that with just a little bit of branch at the top and the branches get wider and thicker as you get closer to the bottom. Once you get those shadows in the foreground and block in a little more detail with the shapes, we let that layer dry and then we start to add more detail to every little bit of the painting. I skipped over a bit here because I didn't have the footage, um, but the next thing we do is start to add our highlights a little bit more. So what I did is I added another highlight to the mountain, the snow, uh, the highlights on the rock, so a little bit more ochre on the rocks there, a little bit more Naples. And I'm also making sure I'm getting that highlight in the reflections as well, adding highlights or at least a lighter value and a little bit more saturated color for the trees in the foreground. So I just mix some phthalo blue with some sap green, a little bit of white, maybe a little bit of ultramarine as well. Like I said before, we're keeping everything cool in the foreground. So I got that second little boost of highlight there. And then when I go back again for one final round of detail to the foreground, we'll just add a little bit more highlight to a couple spots there. Once our foreground's done, the final touch in completing this painting is to just add a little bit more mist rising up off of the lake. And to achieve that look, it's pretty simple. You just take some paint on your brush. I'm mixing ultramarine blue with white and a little bit of black, maybe a hint of phthalo blue. And then putting that paint down in little like squiggles going up into the air there. And then once that little base bit of paint is down. I wipe all of the excess paint off of my brush, 
so it's super dry and then I dry brush so you just take your dry brush and go wherever you put a little bit of paint down and do a couple little swirls with the brush uh, try using different amounts of pressure with the brush on the canvas and that will help you to get that nice fuzzy misty foggy look on the water there thanks for watching this uh, mini tutorial i guess you could call it i hope you enjoyed watching my process to create this painting of mount rainier if you have recommendations for future painting tutorials leave a comment under this video thanks for watching have a great day and happy painting bye bye